formerly of Ada. Uh, Mr. Jones passed away Sunday, December 6th, 2020, at an Oklahoma City hospital. He was born December 8th, 1965, at Ada to James and Evan and Betty Arlene Tatum Jones. He graduated from Ada High School in 1984 and attended East Central University. Of Ada. Uh, Mr. Jones passed away Sunday, December 6th. Mr. Jones had been employed with the Oklahoma. and Blake Brogdon of Ada, two great nephews and a great niece. lived in that white house down the street where I grew up mama used to send me over with things we struck a friendship up it's been a few long summers three and a half years and angry out on his old fourth swing old man Ridley lived in that white house he was in the war when the baby up. lost his wife, Mama, you lost his baby. baby. Broke down now. Struck a friendship up. up. How you keep from going crazy? And angry. I said, I see my wife and son in just a little while. I asked him what he meant. He looked at me and smiled. Said I raise my hands, bow my head, finding more and more truth on the words written in red. You tell me that there's more to life than just what I can see. Oh, I Years later, I was off at college, talking to mom on the phone one night. And all caught up on the dust. Ins and outs of the small town life. She said, Oh, by the way, son. Oh, man, Ridley died. A few years later, I was off at college. Later on that night, I laid there thinking back. Thought about a couple long lost summers. I didn't know whether to cry or laugh. If there was ever anybody who served a ticket to the other side, it'd be that sweet old man who looked me in the eye. Said I raise my hands, bow my head, finding more and more truth in the words written in red. They tell me that there's more to life than just what I could see. I can't quote the book. The chapter or the verse, you can't tell me it all 
Orleans in a slow ride in a hearse. You know I'm more and more convinced the longer that I live. Yeah, this can't be. No, this can't be. No, this can't be. Down our long dusty driveway, I didn't want to go, but I sat out with tears in my eyes, a wondering. Daddy took me by the hand, looked out at the school bus and his little man and said, don't worry boy, it'll be all right. Cause I took this walk, you're walking now, boy, I've been in your shoes. Well, you can't hold back the hands of time, it's just something you've got to do. So dry your eyes, I understand just what you're going through. Cause I took this same walk with my own man, boy, I've been in your shoes. Down our long dusty driveway, I set my mind to go. Well, I was 18 and wild and free and a wonderin'. Daddy took me by the hand, looked out at the world and at his grown man and said, Don't worry, boy, it'll be alright. Cause I took this walk, you're walking now, boy, I've been in your shoes. Well, you can't hold back the hands of time, it's just something you've got to do. So dry your eyes, I understand just what you're going through. Cause I took this same walk with my own man, boy, I've been in your shoes. Down our long dusty driveway, it's time we both would go. Well, he had grown old and gray, and his mind was a wonderland. Daddy took me by the hand, said, I know where we're going, and I understand. Don't worry, boy, it'll be all right. Well, you can't hold back the hands of time. It's just something you've got to do. So dry your eyes. I understand just what you're going through. Cause I took this same walk with my own man, boy. I've been in your shoes. Yes, I took this walk. You're walking now, boy. I've been in your shoes. He was uh, somebody's brother, co-worker, friend. He was a lot to a lot of people. 
And uh, you know, I just can't stress how grateful I am that all you guys are here together. Um, you know, Daddy, Daddy had a temper, but he had a heart of gold. He had a big heart. He cared for a lot of people. You know, he used to tell me, he said, I love everybody. I don't hate nobody. I don't like anybody either, but I love everybody. And, uh, oh, you know, like I said, I'm just glad that everybody's here. Come out and pay their respects. You know, each and everybody in this room had some form of a relationship with him or another. I'm just glad you guys can make it. Uh, if y'all would, let's bow our heads. I'd like to say a little prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for being able to meet today and uh, pay respects to my dad. I just pray that you touch each and every individual here in this room. Bless them. Give them the strength to deal with this. Give them the strength to get through this hard time. And we also pray for protection as we travel the rest of our days. Everybody leaves this service. Um, just continue to bless everybody. Watch over everybody. Keep us safe. And uh, love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would, I'd like to share a few scriptures, uh, hopefully for some encouragement today. And uh, we know that things happen in life that uh, are unexplainable, and we know that uh, it's appointed unto man uh, to be born and then to die at some point. Um, but we can have hope and joy and uh, peace even in the midst of of times of uncertainty, even in the midst of times of, of loss and times of death. Uh, in John chapter 14, Jesus is speaking, and, and there's about to be a transition taking place. And uh, Jesus wants to assure his followers, uh, uh, give them some assurance and, and give them something to hope for, give them something to hold on to as this transition time comes to where he, he's about to depart. They've been with him through this time, but a, a departure is at hand. And uh, from the words that he speaks here, we can, we can find some hope and we can find some encouragement uh, for our lives um, each and every day, not only uh, through times of loss and times of departure for us, but Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. Uh, if you believe in God, then believe also in me. Um, there's, a there's a decision uh, that we can make in our lives to make Jesus the object of our faith, um, the object of our hope, the object of our peace, the object of the assurance and the answer to life. And uh, that's what he's telling us here. He said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. And he's about to give them some truth and give them some revelation here um, that can bring comfort, that can bring joy, that can bring peace in their life. And uh, he says, uh, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And those are very comforting words uh, today, not, not only each and every day, but today. Those are comforting words for us that Jesus himself is, is preparing a place for us, that Jesus himself went to the Father, and, and what we call eternity, he's carved out a spot, a home, a special place that he has prepared himself for each and every person that would call on him, for each and every person that would believe in him, for each and every person that would call his name. He's got an eternal place that's prepared prepared uh, for them. And that, that gives us hope, that gives us peace, that gives us joy, because uh, death doesn't mean that we seek, cease to exist. Death just means we simply pass from this earth to another place, from this walk of life um, to our next walk of life, which is our eternal walk. And uh, he says, uh, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am you may be also. In 2 Corinthians, um, the apostles uh, write, and he says it this way. He says that, uh, and I'll paraphrase a little bit, but he says our, our, our earthly tabernacle is groaning uh, for to be swallowed up by immortal, this immortality, uh, to be swallowed up the, and, and gain that immortality, the mortalness. And he says that uh, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. He says, well, we're in this body. He said, we're, we're not present with God, right? Uh, but when we leave this body, he said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And, and there's no place like heaven. 
there's our, our comprehension, our, our mind, we can't comprehend the greatness and the splendor and the joy and the peace um, um, that just is in heaven, right? Uh, God himself is there. It's a place of constant joy. It's a place of constant peace. He said he'll wipe away every tear from every eye. He'll, uh, there's, there's no sickness. There's no disease. There's no pain. There's no loss. But it's constant joy. It's constant peace in the presence of God, in the presence of the creator. Can you think about that? That the one that stepped out it, before time existed, what we call time, before this earth exist, existed, the one that stepped out and saw nothing, but in his heart and in his spirit, he saw everything. And the one that, that stepped out uh, into nothing, but spoke everything into existence, that created the ground that we walk on, he took time to form humanity from the dust of the earth and breathe his life into it. But he didn't stop there. He took time to send his son to be able to prepare a place for us. He not only gave us life on this earth, he not only gave us the breath of life that, that we have in our lungs for this time and now, but he gave us eternal life, uh, opportunity for eternal life with him in a place called heaven, in a place that he has prepared. And it's great that I, I got to talk to Tyler a little bit about um, his father and, and uh, Tracy, and it was it pleased my spirit and it pleased my heart to hear that uh, within the last few months or so that he had worked on rekindling that relationship with God, that he knew that God was trying to tell him something. He knew that God was talking to him, and he, he used that time to, to rekindle, if you will, and call on Jesus again. And, and I know he was reading his Bible and I know he was praying and I know he was communing with the one that created the universe. He was communing with the one that gave him the breath of life that he had in his lungs while he was here on this earth. He was communing with the one that died for him, the one that prepared a place for him. And that can give us peace today. That can give us joy. That can give us hope knowing that he was spending time with the Father. That, that Jesus himself had prepared a place for him, and he believed in that place. He not only believed in that place, but he believed, and he placed Jesus as this object of his faith, and he believed in the sacrifice that Jesus paid for him. He, Jesus, I'm just going to paraphrase here and use my words, but Jesus saying, look, I, I'm going somewhere that you can't come now, but you, you'll know the way. You'll know the way to get there. And he said, what are you talking about? How are we going to know the way? And he said, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the light. If we could look through the portals of heaven today, if we could talk to Tracy uh, today, uh, somehow communicate with him in heaven, he, he would tell us a few things, I, I think, anyway, that anybody that's in relationship with God, if we could talk to them today that's gone on to heaven, that, that uh, they would tell us a few different things. One, they would tell, don't worry about me. I'm fine, right? I, I'm in a place that I'm better off than you are right now. I'm in a place that I'm not hurting. I'm not sick, I'm not fighting, I'm not struggling, I ain't got to pay bills up here, I ain't got to work, you know, it, it, it's, it far outweighs this, this life and, and alert. And he would, even more important than that, I, I believe that they would tell us that, that they would tell us, be sure and take every opportunity that you have in your lifetime to call on the name of Jesus. Just as Jesus is saying here, take every opportunity that you can in your life to spend time with God, to, to uh, search for yourself that special place that Jesus has prepared for you, that place in eternity, that place with God, because we're never promised tomorrow, right? Things happen. Life happens. Circumstance happens. Situations happens, sickness happens, and unfortunately, death happens. And it's okay to be sad, it's okay to grieve, but on the other side, it's okay to have hope and to have peace and to have joy, knowing and believing that he, he, he made his choice to accept Jesus and that he made his choice and spent time in communion and fellowship with God. And I believe that, that God was probably doing some working in there and preparing him to come into that place because Jesus said, if I go to prepare a place for you, then I'm going to come again. I'm going to get you. I'm going to take you to where I am because my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. My home that I have prepared for you is, is higher and greater than any home you could prepare for yourself on this earth. And that can give us peace. It, all the, the loved ones and the friends before that chose to accept Jesus, it's just, a, it's a great uh, re time of, of reunion and rejoicing.
To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But he would tell us, don't worry about me. I'm fine, right? I, I, I've got more than anything I, I could ask for. You can't imagine the, 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 the peace that I'm in right now. But please take every opportunity that you can to look to God, to look to Jesus, to make Jesus the object of your faith, to make, to make Jesus uh, the Lord and Savior of your life because you don't know when your time will be called. We don't know. We're not promised tomorrow. But let us not, in that, in uncertainty and in that, not knowing if we're promised tomorrow, let us not question um, the love of God. Let us not question the sovereignty of God, but let us believe in the sovereignty of God. Let us hold to the sovereignty of God. Let us hold to the love of God that, that poured out his love so much that he gave us his son to die for us. Because it's not by works that we're saved, but it's, through, it's by grace, through faith, and the works and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Hold on to the, the moments that you had, the, the looking at the pictures. I mean, I, I can see laughter. I can see joy. And, and there's no doubt that Tracy impacted the lives that are in this room. Hold on to those times. Thank God for the time that you had with him. Thank God for the memories that you have. And allow those to bring you comfort. Allow those to bring you peace. Allow the, the fun times, the good times, the laughter, the joy. And even, even when you was mad. Even when you fought, whatever you've done, just thank God that you had those opportunities and even to come and to reconcile and that God granted him the life that he had while he was here and that God granted you the opportunity to be a part of that life. Amen. That can give us hope. That can give us peace, just holding on to those good times, holding on to those memories. But I would uh, urge you and encourage you today, if nothing else, take an opportunity to make Jesus the object of your faith. Take the opportunity to call on God and to call on Jesus to be Lord and Savior of your life. Jesus says this. He says that the thief is the one that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, but I've come that you can have life and that you can have it more abundantly. He wants us to walk with him, talk with him, commune with him, fellowship with him while we're here on this earth. And, and the life that he has planned for us on this earth far outweighs the life that we could ever plan for ourselves. But above and beyond that, Jesus said, look, I'm going to the Father and I'm going to prepare a place for you. A place that when you take your last breath on this earth, life truly begins. We think this is life, but we don't know life like life in heaven. That's when life truly begins, a place of joy, a place in the never-ending presence and light and joy and peace of God. So I encourage you, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, let me know. If you'd like to know more about that, I'd love to talk to you after. Maybe you have been saved and you haven't talked with God in a while. Don't wait until... We're full of sorrow and we're full of sadness and the loss of a loved one or a friend to spend time with God. But look to him each and every day because he loves you. And we're grateful for his son. We're grateful for the blood of Jesus. We're grateful for his love. And, and, and we're grateful for Tracy, for being a part of your lives. And like uh, Jake said, some of you knew him as, as, as dad. Some of you knew him as brother. Some of you knew him as, as husband or boyfriend or uncle or cousin friend, many titles we wear on this earth while we are here, but the greatest title that he ever earned and the greatest title that you and I could ever earn is the title that comes from God through the sacrifice of Jesus in which he calls us a son or a daughter. And we're grateful to know that he wore that title. He ensured his eternity. He ensured his place with God. And that gives us hope. That gives us something to hold on to. So hold on to the memories. Hold on to those things. Never let them go. Never let them die. But hold on to the fact and the peace of knowing that God prepared a place. And God is with him and God can be with you. Amen. If you don't mind, we'll pray. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you again for your, your spirit. We thank you again for your comfort, your peace, God. We thank you, Father God, that we know in these last few months that Tracy was communing with you and fellowshipping and reading and praying and you were speaking to him, God, and we're grateful for that today. 
We're grateful for the blood of Jesus. We're grateful for your presence, your spirit that is with us each and every day. And God, we again just thank you for that peace, that compassion, God, that you said you would leave with us. And we thank you as we pray that today. In Jesus' name, amen. At the presentation of the flag. Again, we want to thank everyone for coming. This concludes uh, the service in here. Uh, service will continue at a cemetery in Bing. Um, again, we'd just like to pray one more time, and then we can be dismissed. God, again, we thank you today for your sovereignty. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for your word. And God, we just pray again and thank you for the comfort, the peace that passes all understanding that you promised us, God. We pray, again, that you be with those, the, the family, the friends, the loved ones, God, um, not only today, but in the days to come for that peace, God, when, when they feel like they have nothing to hold on to because they've lost so much, God, let them know uh, that, that they have you to hold on to and everything that you have in store for them. And we thank you for that. In the name of Jesus, amen.